Your brain is toxic right now. Not metaphorically, literally. As you listen to these words, microscopic proteins are accumulating in the spaces between your neurons. Beta amyloid, tau tangles, metabolic waste products that your cells expelled hours ago, but never left your skull. They're sitting there, marinating in the fluid around your brain tissue, waiting. And if you sleep the way most people sleep, they'll still be there tomorrow morning. Because the way you position your body at night determines whether your brain gets cleaned or poisoned. You've felt it, haven't you? That fog that hangs over your thoughts even after eight hours of sleep. The way your memory feels slippery, like trying to hold water in your hands. The exhaustion that coffee can't touch. You blame stress, age, the pace of modern life. But what if I told you the problem isn't how much you sleep, it's the geometry of how you sleep? What if the angle of your spine, the tilt of your head, the side you favor in the darkness, what if these physical positions control a biological process so fundamental that ancient physicians built entire systems of medicine around it? This isn't self-help. This is survival. Let me take you inside your skull for a moment. Imagine your brain not as a static organ, but as a living city. Three pounds of the most metabolically active tissue in your body, consuming 20% of your total energy, despite being only 2% of your body weight. Every thought you think, every memory you form, every emotion you process creates waste. Your neurons are like factories running triple shifts, and just like any factory, they produce byproducts, damaged proteins, oxidized molecules, cellular debris. In any other organ, your lymphatic system would sweep this away. But your brain doesn't have lymph vessels. For over a century, neuroscientists couldn't figure out how the brain cleaned itself. It was one of medicine's most embarrassing blind spots. Then, in 2012, a researcher named Mike Nettergaard discovered something that changed everything. She called it the glymphatic system, a play on glial cells and lymphatic, and what she found was so elegant it bordered on poetry. Every night, when you enter deep sleep, something extraordinary happens. Your brain cells, every neuron, every support cell, they shrink. Not a little. They contract by 60%, opening up vast channels in the space between them. And through these channels, cerebrospinal fluid begins to flow, propelled by the pulsing of your arteries. It's a nightly tide, washing over the landscape of your mind, carrying away the accumulated toxins of consciousness. But here's where it gets strange. This system doesn't work equally in all positions. Nettergaard's team discovered that the glymphatic flow is 25% more efficient when you sleep on your side compared to your back or stomach. Lateral sleeping, lying on your left or right, creates the optimal geometry for this cleansing tide. The exact mechanism involves gravity, the positioning of major blood vessels, and the way cerebrospinal fluid moves through the glymphatic pathways. Your body knows which angle lets the poison out. Now pause with me here. Modern neuroscience discovered this in 2012. They used radioactive tracers, magnetic resonance imaging, sophisticated fluorescent dyes injected into the brains of living mice, millions of dollars in research, decades of career work. And what did they find? That sleeping on your side cleanses your brain better than any other position. So explain this to me. Why did Ayurvedic physicians, 3,000 years ago, prescribe something called Vamkukshi, sleeping on the left side? as the foundation of mental clarity. Why did they teach that this position calms the mind, aids digestion, and prolongs life? They didn't have MRI machines. They didn't know what a neuron was, yet they knew. And why did the Buddha, in his final hours, lie down in what his followers called the lion's posture? Right side down, one hand beneath the head, legs slightly bent. This wasn't a random choice. Buddhist meditation manuals describe this position as optimal for maintaining awareness while the body rests, for allowing the mind to remain clear even as it approaches sleep. 
They called it the posture of awakening, not sleep as unconsciousness, but sleep as purification. Were they guessing? Or were they observing something that we forgot? Here's what the ancients understood that we're only now remembering. The body is not separate from consciousness. The angle of your spine affects the flow of your thoughts the same way the angle of a river bend affects the flow of water. They didn't need to understand the glymphatic system mechanistically. They observed the results over generations. They noticed that people who slept on their sides woke clearer. They noticed that certain positions led to better dreams, sharper memory, longer lives. So they codified it into tradition, dressed it in the language of their time, and passed it down. But we live in an age of mechanism, so let me give you the mechanism. The glymphatic system requires three conditions to function optimally. First, you need to enter deep NREM sleep, that's stages three and four, where your delta brain waves roll like slow ocean swells. This is when your neurons shrink, when the channels open. If you're anxious, if cortisol is flooding your system, if you're caught in that shallow, restless sleep that feels like floating just beneath the surface of consciousness, your glymphatic system barely activates. Stress doesn't just disturb your sleep. It prevents your brain from taking out the trash. Second, the system works on a circadian rhythm. It peaks during your natural sleep window, synchronized with your body's production of melatonin and the drop in your core body temperature. This is why irregular sleep schedules are neurologically catastrophic. You're not just missing sleep, you're missing the cleaning cycle. And third, and this is the piece that ancient traditions intuited, the system requires proper physical alignment. Side sleeping specifically, because of how it positions the brain relative to the major venous drainage pathways. The internal jugular vein, which drains blood and metabolic waste from your brain, flows more efficiently when you're lateral. Gravity assists the process. The geometry of your body becomes the architecture of your brain health. Think about what this means. Every night that you sleep on your back, you're leaving 25% more waste in your brain. Every night of poor sleep, every night that stress keeps you in light sleep stages, you're accumulating another day's worth of metabolic trash. And these aren't inert substances. Beta amyloid, the protein that accumulates in Alzheimer's disease, is cleared by the glymphatic system. Tau proteins, associated with cognitive decline. Inflammatory markers that damage neural tissue. Your brain produces these every day as a byproduct of thinking. The only question is whether you clean them out each night. Now I know what you're wondering. Left side or right side? The ancients disagreed on this and modern science hasn't given us a definitive answer. Ayurveda says left, something about the position of your heart and the flow of digestive fire. Buddhism says right, echoing the Buddha's final posture. Current research suggests both are vastly superior to back or stomach sleeping, and the difference between left and right is marginal. My interpretation? The ancients were describing the same river from different banks. The core truth, Lateral sleeping activates brain cleansing, remains constant. So here's your protocol, your return to the ancient way. Tonight, when you lie down, choose a side. Place a pillow between your knees to keep your spine aligned. Let your head rest naturally, not cranked up on multiple pillows. Create the geometry that your brain remembers from before we had mattresses and sleeping pills and artificial light. And most importantly, Protect your deep sleep. Darken your room completely. Cool it down. Remove the screens that fragment your attention and spike your cortisol. Your glymphatic system doesn't care about your productivity or your social media engagement. It cares about one thing, getting your brain into the physical and neurological state where the nightly tide can wash you clean. This is the lion's sleep. Not because it makes you fierce, but because it makes you clear because it honors the ancient understanding that your body already knows how to heal itself if you place it in the right position. Modern science didn't discover this. It remembered it. We're not advancing. We're coming home. So tonight, 
When darkness falls and your thoughts begin to quiet, turn to your side. Feel the weight of your head, the alignment of your spine, and know that you're not just sleeping. You're participating in a process older than language, a cleansing that happens in the space between your thoughts, where the tide comes in and carries your ghosts away. Which side will you choose? The answer matters less than the awareness that you're choosing at all. Subscribe to remember what you've always known.